Good evening, everybody. It's Friday night, and it's for time for our Craft Beer Nation Friday Night Hangout. I'm Gil Mello, and I'll be your host for tonight. Um, if you want to learn more about Craft Beer Nation, just check our website, craftbeernation.beer or .org, because we make no money. And from there, you can find us on all the great social media. Um, you, can, uh, you can also watch all our shows, including our uh, news show, Spites and Quartz, on YouTube, so you can subscribe to YouTube, um, and you can see all our past shows. So tonight, we are talking about um, double IPAs, which, uh, I don't know, I, I have a crew here to help, but basically, a double IPA is like a, a stronger, hoppier, and higher ABV IPA that can um, be a little more dry than your typical IPA. So to teach me some more about IPAs and uh, let me know what they're drinking so I can uh, open my beer, I have a few friends here with me tonight. I have uh, Rick Potts from the Foursome Golf TV show, whatever is that you call that now. <laughs> Close enough. Close enough. I tried, I tried to do an ad for you there. I missed that. So Jeffrey, Jeffrey Davis, Sir Charles Dunkling, and our hop head master, Randy Gardner Jr. Uh, so how are you guys doing? How's your week going? So far, so good, man. It's Friday, so. It's right Friday. On. Right on. That's all that matters. <laughs> That's good. So you guys all ready to start this thing? Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. bring it. <laughs> you, you know so like Rick is been pushing his nose in that glass for like Man, I, winning minutes. So why don't we? Oh, yeah. Why don't you get started with you, Rick? Sure. So I missed last week, and I feel bad about it. But I got invited by Total Wine to sit in on a meet and greet beer class with Jake Leinenkugel from Leinenkugel, and um, obviously, hence the name. And it was really cool. About an hour and a half almost two hours listening to him talk about basically growing up as a line in Google, what it was like to grow up in such a massive brewing company that's still to this day very popular and makes pretty solid beer. So I missed last week, but the week before when we did Pale Ales, I did Pale 31 from Firestorm Walker. Last week I was going to do Union Jack, which is the IPA from them, and tonight I have the Double Jack, which is their double IPA. And I'm smelling it because I haven't had this beer in quite a while, um, but I'm smelling it because I'm getting almost like a like a fruity, almost pineapple aroma. And the flavor is not pineapple whatsoever, but it's just unbelievably balanced and just there's no way you would think it was almost 10% alcohol and you could just drink a ton of this stuff. And it's a fantastic flavor. The mouthfeel is thick and, and I don't want to say chewy because it's not quite that thick, but it's got just a fantastic mouthfeel and... I'm just a huge fan of this of this beer, and I've I've online, especially Twitter in the past, I've kind of dogged Firestone Walker a little bit about their limited release beers. I'm not a huge fan of the majority of those, like Velvet Merkin or Parabola. This year was good, but in the past, I've not been a big you, you huge fan. You have issues, man. <laughs> you got <laughs> serious issues. You got yeah. serious, serious issues. issues man. Get over it. Get over it. Over it. Walk it off. Daily, their daily release stuff, like, you know, I mean, looking like comparing Velvet Merkin and Vel Velvet Merlin, I prefer Merlin over that, but, like, I mean, the Double Jack is just fantastic, and they've started canning a lot of their stuff, and I'll be curious to see, and I, I think that'd be a, a fun side-by-side -side to do, like, their, like, the Union Jack bottle versus canned fresh, um, but it's a fantastic beer, four out of five for me on Untapped, and just, the, the aroma is fantastic on this thing. Do you so know any... Sticking my nose in the glass. Do you have any idea what hops are using that beer? Um, you know, I don't, but I'm going to find out and, and let you know because now I'm curious. Yeah, um, let's talk a little bit about double IPA. What do you, what do you all think about double IPA? What's your take on, on it? Just wanted to... Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, they're obviously they're they're big, you know, so I'm, I'm thinking, you know, hopefully nine... 9 to 11, something like that, 8.5 eight to 9 to 11. Um, to me, they kind of come in a couple different styles, one that's you know, pretty malty where the guys lean on the malt bill um, heavily to kind of you know, disguise the alcohol a little bit, and others that are just utter, utter kind of palate wreckers, you know, and I've got one of those teed up a little bit, you know, third, third down in the lineup tonight. But, you know, ideally a great double IPA should be, so balanced that you you know you wouldn't even know it's a dip a double a dip a, unless you you know looked at the can. I mean, it should to me it should be as drinkable as drinkable as a as a regular IPA. Yeah, and that was one of the things I wanted to say when when we were starting to talk about it was they're not necessarily 
like you, they're hoppy, obviously, but they're always, in most cases, so balanced that you don't think about them being as hoppy as they really are. And a good example of that is the Lagunitas Hop Stupid, which is over 100 IBUs, but you would never know it. Like, if you did a blind taste test and handed me a glass of it, I'd be like, oh, yeah, that's, that's good IPA, and never realize that it's got so much hop presence. And same thing with this. Like, I would almost say that the, the Union Jack is as hoppy, if not hoppier, than the Double Jack, but the Double Jack's got almost like a buttery finish, like the mouthfeel just leads to just a lingering, subtle hop flavor. And um, I'll stop talking here in a second, but to answer the hops question, they use bittering hops. They use Warrior, Columbus. They use Cascades, Centennial, and Amarillo, Cascade, and Simcoe. So they got a lot of hops going on in this. this Ricky, I'm going to... I think I kind of disagree with you as far as hop hop stupid is concerned because I thought I thought that beer was actually pretty pretty hoppy. I mean, I, I actually thought it was kind of unbalanced. Which personally, when it comes to to double IPAs, I I I tend to like the ones that are balanced or unbalanced toward the hoppy side. If I don't want a multi IPA, that I mean, in my in my opinion, that kind of that kind of goes against what an IPA is, right? I mean, IPAs are... Cool. But right, I and I agree with I, that. Yeah, I, I don't I, want it to be multi, but yeah. I feel but, like... And I haven't had the, the Hop Stupid in maybe a year and a half, two years, so I'm going to go get a bottle of it and revisit that because if it is unbalanced to a hop perspective, then great. I remember it being more balanced and more malt forward than but, hop. But double IPAs are more often than not unbalanced. A lot of people look for a very unbalanced beer, and I think I think, like, Palette Racker is one of those beer that is all over the place and everybody likes. And I agree with Jeff. Jeffrey, it depends a lot on the on the brewery. Mm-hmm. Some brewery lean on one side or to the other, and uh, some are very ag- aggressive, like Green Flash is with a lot of their beers. And some are more ba- balanced, like uh, Founders is normally very balanced on the beers they make. And now, not only that, I mean, I think it's also um, important to 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 note the distinction between, say. Like what a traditional East Coast style IPA or East Coast style double IPA and a West Coast style double IPA, right? I mean, so at my opinion, you're gonna find more balance on the East Coast and just the opposite on the West Coast. So, um, my I think there's more there's more sweetness too, right? A little more malt and sweetness yeah. to the East Coast, right? But yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's gonna be like kind of like the, not the polar opposite, but definitely a little more opposite of what you get in the West Coast, which is Hot bombs, right? And and that's that's kind of like where my my palate tends to go. I mean, I know a lot of people. One of the beers I was going to drink tonight was on the wings of Armageddon, and um, you know, a, a, a few of the a few of the people who we have here on my, I mean, not on my, but the few people who we've had on on the panel have said that they thought that that beer was you know like really really balanced, you know, because the malt comes through so well. And I drink that beer. I get the malt. But I still, I still think it's it's hop forward. I mean, the the it mul- is hop forward, but it's 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 more maltier than most beers on this style for me at least. It was a, it was a, it, it gets a malt sweetness that is I I not use get from other beers yeah. on the same style. That's just yeah. And remember, I didn't like it the first time. I mean, I like it, but I didn't think it was amazing like everybody said mm-hmm. the first then- time. Then you and then it. I had it again, yeah. yeah. But then I realized, it, uh, you know, this kind of beers, when you drink beers as aggressive as a double IPA, the setting is very important. The first time I said, you know, it was a bunch of beers and I drink in the bar there. And then the second time I was like, relaxed and I said, I'm going to open a beer and chill out. And I realized that's one of those beers is to drink, enjoy it, and just not, you know. I think... I think the first time it's also possible, Gil, that you may have had palate fatigue. Because I mean, we had we <laughs> it's a no, no, problem these days. Yeah. We we had been drinking a lot of beer that night, man. That's true. And then, and then it was just it was, it was just a lot a lot of your your taste buds probably didn't know what to think when you when when you drank that beer. But but Gil, but Gil one thing I've seen is um, if you if you try a dipa and you don't like it at first. Um, have like two or three more, and by the third or fourth one, I mean you'll you'll be feeling it. <laughs> you were drunk enough. <laughs> are you a are you a double IPA fan, Charles? Oh yeah, I love double IPA. It's one of my favorite styles. <clears throat> what is, um, I have hop head. Yep, I mean when I first got into like like today's craft beer, 
Um, Lagunitas IPA was really the gateway beer for me to just leave any kind of macro beer behind for good. Um, but right after that, and it's not an IPA family, but Right after that, it was um, I went right for Arrogant Bastard, which is a strong ale, and then from there went through the IPAs and double IPAs, and so I'm actually. What are you drinking? Drinking tonight? very let's malty. Get into, let's this get a, into our beers. Yeah, this is the uh, Roosterfish uh, at Watkins Glen. This is their Hop Warrior. Cool label. Uh, yeah, cool label. Yeah. It's the eight percent beer. The, it's a hundred plus IBUs. Um, I don't know the ingredients. They really don't list their ingredients on their website all that much. And this is very, like we were talking before. This is very East Coast. This is a big. It's really Malty. more of a malt warrior than a hop warrior. Hmm. There's a big malt sweetness and to it, and then the hops, the bittering comes in at the end. Um, but this is really, the malt really is the star here. It's very different from what you'd expect for most Imperial IPAs where you are expecting that big citrus hop bomb. Where is it? Um, and this, oh, yeah. this is very, very, um, very malty. I like it a lot, but it's very, very different from your normal um, Imperial IPA. And, yeah, and, and Charles, I think, like, um, that can be disappointing sometimes, right? I mean, uh, unless you you know what you're getting in for, if you're expecting yeah. like a I'm hot bomb, yeah. yeah. If, if you're right. expecting a hot bomb, you go in a store and you see this beer called Hop Warrior, <laughs> and you open it, <laughs> and you're like, wait, what? Yeah, and the name really doesn't fit. I mean, it's a, an imperial IPA, so hop usually is in the name somehow. Mm -hmm. um, but really, this is the malts really are the star in this beer, and. I don't know what you could have. Malt Warrior would seem like an odd name for an Imperial IPA. Right. Um, but but it, you're, you're not going to have It's not West Coast by any stretch at all. This is big, malty. You get that caramel, all that kind of stuff from the malts. And then you get that bitter hop. And it's not really a citrus hop either. I'm not sure what it is. But it's, um, it, yeah, it's, it's very, very different. All my other beers that I have in the fridge, the, all the other Imperial IPAs, they're all citrusy, piney. You know, I've got a Hop Stupid in there. I've got resin. I've got high res. I've got a, a double Crooked Tree, I think, mm -hmm. from Dark Horse. So they're all mm -hmm. big, you know, more, much more on the hop side. But I like this as a nice change of pace. I get this from Roosterfish every once in a while when I want to go in that different direction and I want... Um, and a lot of those IPAs are getting, beer. yeah. A lot of those IPAs are getting so high in ABV and IBUs and the hopness that they are doing that they, if they even create a pseudo category, right? They're calling the triple IPAs or yeah, and like that's how six point packages high res. It's like resin is their double IPA and high res is resin on steroids, and they actually have it as an I I IPA on their box. Hmm. This one, this one's on the lower end of the like. Imperial scale at eight percent. I was just about to ask, what's over the seven and a half? It's you're really entering. You're leaving the IPA range around seven and a half and entering the that's, uh, that's the exactly, Imperial IPA. Charles, you and you just answered my question because my I, I was wondering if it's it is it seven and a half or is it eight? I wasn't I'm sure. Eight. Yeah. eight for me. Yeah, but I think in general, category wise, it's probably it's seven and a half. Is more seven, of that. It's seven and a half to ten and a half. Yeah, that's the the range yeah. that BJCP. Yeah, and this is eight percent. Yeah. All right. So, what are you drinking, Jeffrey? Yeah, I'm. Uh, you know, I, t I talked earlier about you know how this style has a lot of different variants. You know, you got the super malty and super hoppy, and then you got the balanced ones. This is. I think this is a fine example of kind of the very balanced double IPA. This is a Mercenary from Odell Brewing in Fort Collins, Colorado. Um, Mercine, it's named for Mercine, which is one of the uh, essential oils that's uh, you know prominent in a, in a lot of lot of varieties of hops. Um, and you know, Mercenary also kind of sounds like it's going to kill you. So I think it's a it's a good it's a good play on words. Um, this is a very very balanced. Um, you know, very balanced double IPA, nice, nice appearance. Pretty, pretty golden. Not, not really coppery. Um, it's not malty at all, um, and the hop profile is really, it's more on the, um, 
kind of floral and citrusy sort of a, it's not a it's not really a starburst like uh, you know Deschutes fresh squeezed or some of these really really tropical ones but you get really nice kind of like a green apple and, and uh, tangerine sort of um, it's a little bit sweet you know it's kind of like got some honeysuckle to it almost but super super smooth. I mean, super smooth. It's um, nine point three percent and seventy. It's only seventy IBUs, so it's um, very drinkable. I could, if you didn't know what this was, you could you could pound four of them easily in a heartbeat and, and then be in trouble. But I, I think this is a very kind of quality um, balanced IPA with a sort of an emphasis on the um, fruitier you know fruitier floral type of hot profile. And then just some kind of biscuit biscuit malts in the back. I think they're they're pretty secretive about actually the hop the hop uh, build. They don't say anything on the label. And I read some things that people actually went to the brewery and try and asked the brewer, and you know he said it's kind of a trade secret. But I'm I'm guessing it's like it's probably got like some Simcoe and maybe like Amarillo and and I think about six or seven other things that I can't can't really sort out. So this isn't this isn't a single hop beer. I think it's kind of yeah, uh, you know well, a pretty complex hop profile. Well, the uh, the mercenary has a Murillo, Citra, Simcoe, uh, Centennial, Galena, and Horizon hop. That's you're not gonna have to, you're not gonna have to kill us now, are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, yeah. The, the, I mean, Odell is is an amazing brewery. They do some really really good beers. We actually yeah, and uh, they were. To, Go ahead, Charles. Yeah, I was just about to say they were on our pints and quarts uh, a mm -hmm. week ago. Is it episode thirty? Episode thirty-nine. Yep, episode thirty-nine. So I can cue that up to like twenty-seven minutes and thirty-two <laughs> seconds and get the hop the hop profile. <laughs> yeah. okay. no, we talked to the guy from the Barrow Age uh, okay. uh, series. So. Well, here's the thing. Yeah, I mean, you in there, Barrel and Pilot uh, Brewer. Yeah. You can know all the hops, but if you don't know the schedule, yeah, yeah right, the percentage <laughs> don't, don't matter. <laughs> don't matter. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, that's like um, Chad uh, from Noda. He's like, yeah. I tell you everything I put in my yeah. beer, but just not I'm trying to brew it the way I brew it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah and, you know, and that, that's the thing about clones. Uh, you know, clone beers. I, I, I'm, I have an appreciation for people who can drink a beer and try it several times until they get it right. It's just, uh, you know, it's yeah. it's quite a thing for people that yeah, not people me. don't don't give it the, don't give it the, 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 the making clones are not an easy thing. Yeah. There's Especially some, have a complicated beer, you know. There's some guys there with a pretty accurate palate that can just yeah. pull all the stuff. I I'd get bored of making the same beer over and over and over, trying to just tweak it a little bit, tweak it a little bit, tweak it a little bit. <clears throat> I want to make a different style every time. Yeah, but if it's your business, you know. Yeah. That's what you do. So what are, what are you drinking, Rennie? I know you're like very excited about your beer. I'm drinking my first ever beer, thanks to my man Freddie. <laughs> first ever beer. From Trillium out of uh, Boston, Massachusetts. Oh, nice. Awesome. This is called the yeah, Uppercase Double IPA, and I pulled up some information on it earlier, and I just wanted to read the the commercial description. Like I was like, oh my goodness, this. Hold that label up, Randy. This commercial mm -hmm. description has me mm. creaming my cords. <laughs> I can't <laughs> believe you're wearing cords. <laughs> so I'm wearing really cleats. R r really unassuming, r really unassuming yeah. label, but yep. I mean, I think that's awesome. I kind of, I like that. And, and I, yeah, I used awesome. to be, I used to be a person who, who like look for like labels that jump out, and I was like, I'm never drinking anything from Maine Beer Company because those <laughs> labels are stupid. That's bullshit. Yeah. That's and, boring. And, and, right, and then I drink the beer, and I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. It's like Green Flash, right? Green yeah. Flash, Green Flash. They they made a design. They changed the name and the color, and that's it. Let's yeah. not screw yeah. with it. Let's make <laughs> beer. Green Flash's new labels look like something straight out of le the late '80s. <laughs> <laughs> their, their new but anyway, the the commercial. You have to there's their logo on the label, right? <laughs> the um, commercial description for this beer says uh, uppercase is a delicate, um, has a delicate dry pilsner malt character with a smooth, soft, doughy mouthfeel from the raw wheat oily hop resin, which all serves as a canvas for this twice dry hopped 9% double IPA. Overripe mango, pineapple, and passion fruit aromas leap out as the beer is poured. The impression of tropical fruit, fruit also takes the lead in the flavor, which is the layered further by white wine, pine resin, and grapefruit zest. Hop primarily with mosaic and supporting roles played by Galaxy, Citra, 
Columbus, in Columbus. We figured there would be considerable interest, so we brewed three batches, and they're going talking some more. And like, like when I first smelled this beer, like one of the first hops that jumped out at me was Galaxy, because wow. I, I I love the mm. Galaxy hop, and I and like you you can't help but to smell Galaxy in this beer, and and the description. Is is on point, man. This is a fruity. This is a really fruity IPA. Um, it actually it actually finishes really dry. Yep. And um, like like every time you see my my glass is full right now, cause like every time I take a sip, I I top it I top it back off. <laughs> <laughs> because it's 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 really delicious, man. I mean I don't. It's a it's nine percent. Um. Uh, I don't know what the what the IBUs are, but it's a nine percent ABV double IPA. Um, fruit yeah. bomb. Hold that up again. Hold the glass up again. It's a nice big cloudy IPA, right? Yeah. Definitely. I don't, I definitely don't think they filter their beer. Yeah. No, it's <laughs> nice. Filter. And um, I mean, like it 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 smells like it smells like you know like pineapple. You get. Like a little bit of pineapple, like some mango. You get you get that passion fruit that they. Wow, I didn't even realize that. I just said everything that was in the description. Pineapple, <laughs> mango. You get some passion fruit, but that's exactly what you get on on the smell. Finishes dry, so it forces you to want to take another another sip. And um, man, Freddie, thank you so much for this, man. This is this is if if this yeah, is, Freddie, thank you. Yeah. You you may have ruined my Trillium experience because if this is my first offering from them, everything else is probably gonna suck. <laughs> or, but or I would love to be proven wrong. But I mean, this this yeah. is an uh, this is an amazing beer, man. Very well done. What's well, their dis- What's their distribution footprint like? Pretty pretty narrow, mm-hmm. Freddie. Y- yeah, it's um, um yeah. I- they, they're, now they're going. They're expanding now to their second brewery. So it's all, they're gonna. I forget what their what the uh, expansion is exactly, but um, how many barrels? But they're literally like they they can't keep up, man. They they, they sell out so fast. There there's a uh, restaurant bar literally next door that gets their stuff you know on tap, so they're on draft. But I think they no amount get bottled. State, right? They're just in, they're just distributed in their own state, right? Yeah, yeah, they're they're not they're barely outside of Boston. Okay, okay. got it. Awesome, nice. Man, this uh, this is a this is a great beer. This is a great double IPA. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> they're shooting. Suppose from what they're saying, they're shooting for uh to open up the uh the new brewery later this year. So that's definitely gonna you know we'll see what they do. I, I'm assuming it sounds like they really want to expand. So I'm not sure how far out. So what are you drinking, Freddie? Hold on, wait. And for what it's worth, more. It, okay. this one was bottled on 324. So. Oh, <laughs> Anything else you want to throw on our faces? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm drinking the uh, actually the same thing. But from, I got a little growl, 32 ounce growler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who has pressure yeah. now? Yeah. That's all right. Who and, has uh, who, who has uppercase period? <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, yeah, man, same thing like Randy said, man. The first time I had this, I went to the release. And it, it's just incredible, man. It's super fruity, man. It's like you said, it's dry. You just want to keep drinking it, and just like sucks you back in every time. Yep. You know the the uh, the New England area there in uh, Massachusetts, they they make like four beers that you can remember. But man, those four beers they make it, you yeah. really remember them, you know. Yeah. It's like really, uh, I'm gonna, I don't know what I can do, but I don't know if you guys heard of Treehouse here. Yeah, I heard of Yeah. They are. They're making. They're they're in Western Massachusetts, but they are making some killer beer, man. I mean, I so. I tell you, New England can hold their own when it comes to IPAs, man. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, if you think about um, Alchemist, they made their whole oh, name yeah. off of Heady Topper. <laughs> and then you got um, what's that one? Uh, it's a Fiddlehead or. or yeah, Fiddlehead, uh, Lawson, Sunshine, <laughs> right? Yeah, Lawson. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, they have the Sunshine. Phil, Phil Farmstead, Lawson. Farmstead. Yep. You got Trillium. I mean, they like they're killing IPAs up there. I mean, we may have you, to. Come you out think with for a... an area that has six months of winter, they would have a lot of stouts, right? But right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, barley wines and hey, <laughs> but see, that's the thing. They got six months of winter, so they enjoy the hell out of their summers. <laughs> so... <laughs> that's the truth. Cool. Man. Hey, I got a message from Doug here. He's changing diapers. Governor. Yeah. Okay. 
Doug's like, not sure if or when I will get to join, but I'm drinking a Gubna from Oscar Blues All Proper for Jeffrey Davis. Hey, picks, <laughs> picks are never happened. you got to prove that you got proper glassware. Well, well, um, sure. On, on nah. that note, let me talk about my beer, because yeah. my beer I got from Doug Nolan. Um, and I want to take a bow to Founders, and here's another reason why <laughs> Founders is my favorite brewery. Uh, just going to get, where's the Gubna? Put the Gubna on first before I talk. So if you're not, if you're just okay, listening to this on our sec. podcast, we're showing Gubna picture now. And Doug Nolan is drinking it out of that little, that little, <laughs> that little tiny, ass glass. That little That's tiny glass. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, those are uh, those yeah. are some of, they're pop popular now. Those are like the the heavy bottom ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. have any of those. Three ounce. Three ounce Three glass. Ounce. All right. no, no, that, 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 that's that's actually a whiskey size glass. It holds, yeah. it holds more than you think. So I want to I want to talk about my beer and this beer is uh, I was a little I wasn't expect much because this beer is nearly two years old and when you're talking about an, an imperial like it's an imperial Indian IPA or a double IPA a two year old you like you probably don't want it anymore right <laughs> but this beer I want you guys to take a look and I will tell you the name of the beer look at the head the carbonation this beer is holding wow. And you have no idea. The smell is just took over the area here. So I'm drinking um, Founders Doom. Oh yeah, Doom, it's killer. Yeah, which he, uh, was that 2013, right? Yeah, 13, 2013, yeah. yeah it but came that's out. barrel aged. It's bourbon barrel aged. Anyway, right. right. So this is bourbon. This is an IPA that's bourbon barrel. A still is very hoppy, you know, um, aroma. So um, the Doom is actually the double trouble barrel aged. So what they did, they, they took uh, the Double Trouble and uh, aged it for four or five months on barrels uh, and did this. And, they, and I'm thinking, okay, it's barrel age, can extend sometimes, but nearly two years. But you guys have no idea. Um, yeah, that's uh, 2013 uh, back, backstage series from Founder. I mean, the smell is just crazy. Um, you get like... A lot of the a lot of the citrus like a, a tangerine kind of a orange kind of a flavor to it, but then you get it's it's a weird because you you get that IPA and then all of a sudden you get vanilla and oak notes. It's very confusing. You're like you, your mind goes like okay something is not right there, right? But just mm -hmm. uh, um, it does it, it is hoppy. It, it is not hop heavy. I will tell you that. Although there's a lot of citrus forward to it, um, it's a little sweet. I mean, not really sweet, but there's a sweetness to it. And then the same thing that you get on the aroma, you get on the on the taste. I, I, I this is my last glass. I have drunk the whole bottle as we talk about it. And you get uh, you get the vanilla again, and I think that's probably the barrel aged. Um, uh, and it's somewhat be bitter in the end, but not as much as I would expect for an IPA. You would expect more like a, a, a more bitter finish, but not that much. Still, you get a bitterness, net, a bitterness, bitterness there. And um, again, that orangey or tangerine uh, flavors to it. You know, I, I, is that a beer you've had fresh before, or is this your first time having it? No, that's, that's the thing. That's my first time, so I have no comparison. Okay. If it's better, fresher, man, this beer must be... Uh, Amazing beer. It's uh, so, you know, you get a, you get a little bit of the alcohol, but it's not as, I mean, you don't get as much alcohol for a, over ten percent beer, which you normally expected. It could be the age. It's, it's the barrels, probably. You know, you're yeah, you're yeah, the just, barrels more than anything. Go else. ahead, Randy. I, I I so I had that beer fresh, and um, e even fresh, I didn't think that it, I didn't think that it had a whole lot of um hop edge to it. Mm -hmm. and so, it has so, it has it hops on the ramp. It can kind of rounds hop. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. and and I thought it was it was more um like more like more dogs barking and stuff. Um, <laughs> no, nah, but but I thought fresh. I thought it was really bourbon forward. But it is. I'll, it is a lot of oaks and vanilla on it. And that was my first time having a bourbon barrel aged IPA. And and at first I was like oh, I don't know I don't know if bourbon and, and hops play well together but by the time I got to the bottom of the bottle it was delicious which is a big bottle 
Yeah. Uh, you know, if somebody would blind blindfold me and I just smell this beer, I would say it would be more like a, a malty beer, maybe a red ale or barrel aged with some hoppy, like a, you know, like imperial stout or something that, but more hoppy for, but not an IPA. Um, this beer is amazing, man. If it's better fresh, I wish I had had it fresh because it's. Uh, <coughs> I mean, it's gone. The head's gone. He had this beautiful, um, fluffy head. Uh, you can see the lacing on the glass there. For a beard, for an IPA that's been sitting for nearly two years, uh, this is amazing. This is a very complex beer too. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can tell. Hello, complex. Yeah, this is as complex as a beer can come. Um, and I know uh, I have a quote from uh, Dave Engberg. Uh, he says. While Double Trouble is brewed to turn your world upside down, Doom is brewed to tear it apart. <laughs> so, uh, this is... <laughs> hey, Doug, if you're listening or watching or trying to join right now, thank you. This is... I mean, this... I mean, look at the color of that beer. It's just uh, this gold, cor uh, orange color. This beer... Um, See if I get the specs here. So they use a Summit, Amarillo, and Simcoe, and then they drop, they dry hop it with Amarillo and Simcoe, and then they age it for four months on a barrel. They barrel age for four months. Uh, so yeah, you get all that. It, it's an IPA with all the goods of a, you know, a barrel aged beer, a bourbon barrel aged beer. This is amazing. This is like I. As I said, I'll, I'll bow down to, to Founders, and I will state again, that's why Founders is probably my top three best brewers. I mean, if you look at their menu or what do you call it, in their lineup, I think there's very few brewers that can match them as quality per lineup, right? Like, all across the board, every beer they make, mm -hmm. it's like good to highly... And very good. So it's I, I I agree, yeah. and that's one of the things I think that makes them awesome is that they, um, like they don't just do one style well. They do so many yeah, different styles yeah. and, and knock them all out of the park. So that's a testament to their brewers, man. And yeah. they're they're creative and they stretch out, but you know they usually hit it. You know even when they try something different, it's it's you know nine times out of ten pretty pretty damn solid. Yeah, when we talk to Dave. Uh, he, I mean, he, as he explained, the, the kind of a length they go to get their beer out to the to the public, you just you can't believe it's just the amount of chore of everything they do, and from their back series to their you know their average beer, they do that. They they take no you know small measures to get their beer out and and done the right way. So, and you know priced right. That's and what's kind their of motto? Thing. What's their motto? Like, um. Like brewed for us or something like that, or yeah, I would, I'm not sure. Uh, something like that. So yeah, <laughs> you know they're not gonna put it out if it's not good, right? So right. Yeah. At least they aren't. A lot of breweries put it out regardless, but founders, if it's like you won't be disappointed with any any founders beer that that you pick up. You may not be a big fan of the style, but you can rest assured that that beer is made properly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. That's, so yeah. I, I have a question um, in general. Since we've done pale ales and IPAs, and now we're doing all the big, like, double imperial, triple, whatever tonight. Um, I know already, you know, Randy's, like, praise at the altar of the galaxy hop. So um, what, what is your I'm, favorite I'm, hops? Like, what's the hops? When you see that on that label, you know i got to grab that. All of them. For me, Mosaic. <laughs> I'm 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 just, I'm I'm just yeah I'm just Gaga for I think Mosaic has that orangey tangerine citrus taste that just for my palate is just great. For me, I like Jade. Jade's awesome. You don't see it that often, but if you can ever get a single hopped beer brewed with Jade, it's uh, pretty amazing. Don't know if I've ever had that. Yeah. For me, in the beginning, it was more along the lines of Citra Cascade, yeah. uh, but I've really morphed more onto like the Mosaic Nugget and um, and even the couple of beers I've had with Galaxy is another one. Those are just they're really exciting hops for me, you know? You, I th you I can do a lot with them. Yeah, I think things like the Nugget Nectar and the, the Nugget Hops and, um, and the Cascade is the kind of aroma that 
inputs on a beer, which give you yeah. that pleasure. And I think it's the same goes for Galaxy. I wondered, I imagine that's why Randy likes so much, because the nose that the Galaxy spray yeah. is just great. Well, is Galaxy something you can get in home brewing? Can you even get Galaxy to home oh, yeah. brew with? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I wasn't sure. I know sometimes some hops are harder to get than others, so I wasn't sure what the availability is for them. Now, it, it's one thing that I see on on the IPA on the IPA series. Like we did, the, we did Payway, we did IPA, and now we're doing Double Plus, right? Uh, a lot of I, I wonder how much of this market. I mean, there like I know Moylan's and a Sounder Fear, and what's that Citra Brewing? They have they, they even have like a a quadruple IPA. I mean, you know, yeah, a lot it's of not really an IPA. It can't be true to style at that point. Yeah. I mean, what is it at that point? Is it a strong ale or a barley wine or you know what? What does it become? Or is it just uh, a maybe not well balanced beer at that point? Yeah, yeah it can't be very balanced at fifteen percent or eighteen percent, whatever quad would be. Yeah, and how many breweries can really brew in that range? Dogfish Head, we know, yeah. can do it. La- um, Lawson's how makes, many yeah, others? Triple, Lawson's makes triple sunshine. I think it's their, their triple. I think it's like eleven. I think it's a uh, eleven ABV. Yeah. So anybody but, uh, in dog, like, second beer? Yeah, me, I am. So. No, not yet. So so this is the other one was balanced. This is the power. Oh. Okay, so this is more cowbell. Great keeping, name. Keeping it proper you, you, for you support you support in uh, oh, yeah. Buffalo Bio, huh? They're, I mean, you're making sure they stay on. Don't, don't don't talk smack. We got a beer exchange showing up at your house on Tuesday. Okay, so <laughs> represent. So, so but this this beer is um it's 118 IBUs, nine percent. So it's a it's a flat out uh, bitter bitter bomb, but it's very drinkable. You know, very drinkable. And 16 ounce cans, you gotta love it. So yep. Yeah. So you said that the IBU isn't there a number that the human palate can even detect, like 125 or something? It's about it's about 110, 115. 110. Yeah. yeah. So like, yeah. at what point, as a brewer, do you stop worrying about the IBU when you know it's going to be over? I mean, like Palate Wrecker is one. They promote that as being like 128 or whatever IBU. Like 110 or 128, the palate's not going to matter. Yeah, palate right. difference? Yeah. Like if it's, yeah, over, it if it's over 90, it's a bitter beer. Yeah. Marketing yeah. I mean, is. Well, when I was at the uh, Six Points uh, Beers for Beasts like a couple of years ago in the city, and by city I mean New York City, as a New Yorker, that's what we. <laughs> Boston's well, the only city, but um, <laughs> yeah, they had no all, all these different beers there, and they had one beer called Leonidas, and it was called Leonidas because it was 300 IBUs, and I made sure to hit that at the very tail end because there's no way you start with that beer because you're not going to taste anything else in that room after that. Right. I, had, and I, had, I was uh, actually uh, really uh, sick. I had a fever and everything, but I went to that beer for Beast anyway. And by the time I worked my way around to Leonidas, I was about 15 beers in. And I couldn't even tell you. I mean, it just, there was nothing left. It was time to go after that, you know. You had I, like I don't a, even know if it was a, good or not. <laughs> you had a deviated septum after you smelled that and drank yeah. it, but it was it cleaned out your sinuses. You know? I had oh, yeah. I had I had a McKellar uh, 1000. Have you guys have that? Um, they claim they have a 1000 IBUs. I mean I don't know I don't even know how you measure. Is that, that even right. possible? Uh, I'm I don't know. I mean once you once you get to that, and I know there's like about I look at there's about a, a, a about a. 10 to 12 brewers that claim to have a, a thousand IBUs, and McKellar is one of them. Yeah. I'm trying to think well, it's a thief or something. But, you know, you know at that point, it doesn't, their yeah, beer didn't seem that bitter to me. That's the funny thing. It yeah. didn't seem, I mean, the IBUs didn't match what I was drinking. Well, what are the IBUs on, uh, like, Brew Dogs? They're, like, Tactical Nuclear Penguin and then that, other, that other one. Are those that ABV? I mean, are the IBUs generally low or? Does, do you have to have the high IBU to go with the high IB, ABV? Not really. No, right? no, you have this no, giant no, wall. No, the They're really all dependent on each other. Yeah. 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 So. I mean, most you know, super super high ABV stouts are 15, 10 to fifteen IBU. Yeah, so it's, it's all. It's, you know, 
Yeah. So what I, do you do? What do you do with what? What's the point of a thousand IBU beer? Marketing, like Gil said. Yeah. yeah. I, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. There's, I'm a, a, if there's an untapped Millennium badge, you know. Then I'm sure there is. It. If there's yeah. not now, there will be. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, it's uh, there's there's a lot of marketing, like the whole session IPA or you know whatever they call it. I, I'm happy to have those because I think it's nice to have. Uh, you know, all of a sudden this shortage of uh, hops we had in this last year, it shows how brewers really can make very flavorful beers that doesn't necessarily needs to be 12 percent, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. That, I, th I think that was a good thing for the industry. Yeah, the session IPA, it's a smart move. I mean, yes, it's very slick marketing, but it, it really is a good um, – if I'm going to have someone coming into craft beer, you know, I'm going to give them a, a session IPA maybe before I'll even go up to like a West Coast IPA. So Yeah, if I'm, I'm mowing the grass and it's 100 degrees outside, I don't want to get dehydrated with lots of alcohol in my body. So, you know, drinking at 5% is just – but but if you're gonna be dehydrated anyway, you might as well be hammered. You know? <laughs> I mean, yeah. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> the low mower going like you holding it to like yeah. just <laughs> look at the bright side, man. <laughs> the neighbor's like, what's that? Guy? Why is that guy <laughs> mowing the park grass? <laughs> Circles, yeah. That's that's funny. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So what? I don't know. Uh, I, I just love. I'm. I have to say, I'm not a hop head. I, I I like maltier beers. I like a lot of stouts and things. But I have I have learned an appreciation appreciation for hoppy beers. You know, um, a lot of to do like with the, the people that I am as we interact to, to each other here on the on the, and on Friday night and the and I, sometimes like Randy. Is Randy back? Oh, he's back. So yeah, he's sometimes back. Randy's so excited about a beer that I have to go try it, you know. And it, and, and I think a lot of to do with beer is that social life, you know. It's not only beer is a lot of passion, uh, socialize and things like that, and experiment and, and and share things with your friends. So I hear a friend like Randy that I trust when he drinks, and he says, "Ah, oh, this beer is like, ah. unless it's stone, then I just." Turn it off. No, just kidding. Because <laughs> I'm gonna say that about every stone beer, right? <laughs> but, but it is though. I mean, it's like like like, like foodies. You know, you, you know, you find an ingredient mm -hmm. or, or, or a recipe or something. You know, it, it's it's a big shared experience where you want to share that with your friends and people who have. Um, I guess for us, you know, we all have our our we're all on our own different levels of knowledge in terms of beer. Um, I, for me, some of you guys are beyond me because you all brew, so that's a whole just, just, other level. If you're listening, of understanding. he's not talking about me. If you're listening to the yeah. podcast, he's not talking Unless about. Unless we're talking me. about pineapple, and then uh, we go to Gil. But um, but uh, but you know, it's like it really is uh, a community, you know, it which is. is you know, but, but and that's one of the things that I love about the craft beer world. It's you can get people from completely other countries and they'll talk about a beer and or they'll mention a malt or a hop and you're gonna know right away that's I gotta find that I gotta seek that out or you're gonna know okay I know I'm never gonna go near that beer because that malt just disturbs me you know yeah. so it's really interesting that um, this just this brew can really have such far-reaching impact in a positive way to, I mean, look at us. We're we're all over the place. That's beautiful, but yeah. it's to, it's to, it's totally personal, though. I mean, no, knowledge aside, and it's all know, subjective. Yeah, you know, one, one guy's uh, amazing, packed with flavor, life changing experience, and is another guy's drain pour. I mean, so yeah. and that's cool. That's the way it is, you know. Yeah, well, that's yeah. with all of the arts, music, uh, you know, painting, whatever, you know. And beer to me is a craft beer is an art. Beer is art. art form. That's one our of next the things that I. I like to say when somebody argues with me about a flavor of a beer, like so going back to the Firestone Walker stuff, where somebody says, oh, that's great, that's the best beer ever, and I think that that beer isn't that good and it's a drain pour, the best part about that is we're both right. Because yeah. it's me yeah. paying for that beer, me enjoying it or not enjoying it, and we both win. You don't have to like every style of beer. You don't have to like every beer. 
And that's oh, Rick's, oh, Rick's case most not enjoying. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, but you're, you're right just up to the point when Firestone Walker bans you, right, Ricky? <laughs> hey, they did, they did respond. You know, you, 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 know, you, know, you know you bad mouth Fire, Firestone Walker. You're almost like a personal... Well, I'm not Same bad mouthing him. I'm just. I'm almost took a plane. Let it go. Let it go. No, he's, oh, he's being honest. He's being honest. Just and kidding. yet, yeah. what did he choose to represent? The pale ale, the IPA. No, I agree. I agree, Ricky. I think that's it's it's personal, and and that's why we need to be a little less snobby and more geeks. And respect, you know. I, I think you don't like the beard. That's fine. I, I, yeah, just because I like and you don't, I don't have to punch you in the face. At least not on on air. The the, the thing <laughs> with beer, I don't know. I th I think that beer truly is the social lubricant. I mean, I mean, you can. It's gonna ultimately get you to the same destination as liquor might get you. But liquor is like liquor is like a like a car crash at at ninety miles per hour. Whereas beer is like you know, you're going on a cruise, and then, you know, you're just cruising at 20 miles per hour, and then as the night go on, you know, you start speeding up a little bit. So you, so the beer takes you on the whole ride. Liquor just hur hur hurries up and gets you there. So, so, so like, so, and I say that, and, and th that, that whole ride that beer takes you on is the social aspect of it. I mean, we can sit down, and we can have this beer, and Discussion, yeah. we can we can have this whole conversation around the beer, whereas, you, I mean, you, you you can talk, I'm sure there are people who can talk bourbon all day long, but, I mean, the the variations that come with bourbon, in my opinion, pale in comparison to the variations that come that come along with, with beer. I mean, we could, if we have six beers, we can have six completely different styles that aren't even remotely close to each other, and we can go as in-depth as we want to, and we can both have different differing opinions and like Ricky said still be right yeah. and I think that that's the awesome part about beer is that it's 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 truly social it, it promotes it, it's more fun when you're drinking beer with somebody else who appreciates it you and can drink liquor what people most people think it's a very complex drink it's not you know yeah it's it's rounded and and, and it hate I hate when I the other day I read I read this article and the guy says what's the fuss about it's just beer I was like no, it's more than just beer. It's beer. Mm -hmm. You know, it's much yeah. more complex than wine is. Yeah. And uh, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and like we've been like this past three weeks. I mean, the hop has really been kind of the star. I yeah. mean, because mm -hmm. uh, hops can you can take the same exact recipe and brew it the same exact way and just change one hop and you're mm -hmm. gonna come out with a completely different experience. Yeah. And uh, and on the IPA side, the double IPA side, I mean that's that's what you know what we're learning about as we experience more of these types of beers. It, we're really beginning to learn what hops do to a beer. And yes, the malts are important, but like when you have the single hop, like Green Flash has a whole series of single hop beers, and a lot of other breweries do. McKellar. And, and you really get to yeah, you really get to. Um, explore the hop. I, I don't know if there is there a single malt beer. Does anyone do a yeah. malt series it's, like they, that? They do single malt, single it's, hop. Like yeah, smash. it's yeah. called malt. It's called malt beverage. But if you put no hops, you can't call it beer. Yeah, but I mean, there's nobody putting out a series of beers that it's the recipe is the same, but they just change the malt, like they nah. do with hops. Nah, because I mean, I mean, uh, w w when you brew a beer, you, you your base there aren't that there aren't a ton of variations on base malts. Yeah, the malts are they seem to be a much smaller component or, yeah. or choice. Well, I guess, selection. well, that said, depending how you toast them out, yeah. a malt you can change a beer from being a porter. The malt is what reg regiments if it's a porter or a or a yeah. stout. and then even. You know, and that's when you get into the whole black IPA thing as well. With the, the roasted malts really mm -hmm. takes the IPAs down that black IPA or Cascadian or whatever you want to call it road. Um, but I, I've I've really enjoyed these last three weeks of doing this series. You know, uh, it's it's been a lot of fun, and for me, it's I have in my fridge the ones I always drink in these styles. But I have also wanted to explore and go back to things I haven't had in a while and seek out beers that I may not have had on air, but I've gotten to just dive more into the styles again. 
and explore a little more. Yeah. Okay. Well, but real quick, to go back on to what you were saying about malt, I mean, so mm -hmm. malt can give you a ton of different flavors. I, I, I don't want to give the wrong impression that, oh, yeah. that you're limited with malt, but th th there are only so many base malts. Yeah. When it comes to specialty malts, there's there's a, a plethora of things that you can do with the with the, the different types of specialty malts. So, um, I, I mean, it would be kind of hard to do like a single malt yeah. single malt beer unless you to, to to get the differences between the different base malts. You'd have to do a smash beer using the same hop every single time, mm -hmm. but just using but just use different malts every single time. Yeah, and, and that's probably something they do behind the scenes, you know, in their little batch kits and experimenting. Or I mean, that was, it was, was it, I think it was Sierra Nevada who does that. They buy Budweiser or like Bud Light, and then they drop a different hop into each one and see what oh, the yeah. hops do. But, but is anybody around ever, with it? I did that on the Rendley. I did that on the Rendley night. I put tons of yeah. hops and fruits on my Budweiser, Bud Light. Was still crapped. Yeah, <laughs> I don't care what you say. But has, has anybody ever had a smash beer that was life changing? I mean, I've had quite a few of them, and you know they're all solid, but there's nothing that just like blows you away. I've never, favorite. I've never had a smash beer. Single oh, malt. Yeah. Okay. 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 And for those listening, yeah. smash single malt and single hop, single malt and single hop smash. Yeah. I never had. I, I have single <laughs> hops a lot. I never had a single malt. Um, so yeah, there's qu quite a few breweries that do them, and maybe it's it's probably just for kegs, you know. But they they have a series of smash beers, and you know they're all good. But it's just I don't know. There's yeah. nothing that you're like saying, man, I wish they bottled this. You know? yeah. yeah. Charles, um, I know you 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 you've been thinking about getting into home brewing, and a good way to to start is um as far as getting the diff the nuances and and malts when you go to your home brew shop, just taste them. Yeah. Just awesome. taste, taste all the different malts. Yeah. And right. you know, you know, yeah. there, the, for people trying to new, there's a, a a couple in New York. Uh, I wish I remember their name. Oh, sorry, but they do kits. They Brooklyn, only do Brooklyn they only Shop. Do, is that their name? They mm -hmm. only do uh, in Brooklyn. I know they're in Brooklyn. They only do all grain kits. Mm -hmm. And I bought one of their kits. It's just excellent. If you wouldn't try their first hand on a, I would say. You might as well just do all grain and get one of their kits. Uh, well, when I eventually get around to brewing, I'm just going to go to all grain. I, yeah. you know, I just want to go in that direction anyway. Yeah. But they, they, yeah, they send you a little bigger yeah, than a dollar in. size, so I you can get it too. enough. Right. Yeah, and work on it. So. Uh. <clears throat> yeah, and and to the show, we're almost hitting up the hour, and I think is it Pilsner is next week. Mm -hmm. Well, so before we, go, we before a, we go to Pilsner, uh, let, let, let's just get go to quick. Through, I will start with Charles, Randy, Freddie, Jeffrey, Rick. Just in a couple words. Yes, no for IPA and why. Charles. Well, I'll, okay, starting with me, the IPA is what made me leave crap, um, macro beer behind for good. It was the, the, the discovery of all these different hops out there and all the different flavors. And it was really that, that grapefruit, you know, Essence, which from Lagunitas IPA, which to me really is the quintessential West Coast IPA. Still, it may not be the highest ranked anymore because it's been around for a long time, and but that is what really dragged what dragged me into this world full time. And I love hops. I mean, I've gone all over the spectrum now. Most people maybe start from the malt and work their way up to the hops, but I dove into the hops and I've been working my way in the other direction. Um, uh, but it's nice to come back to big hoppy beers. So, um, for me, absolutely IPAs six <laughs> six thumbs up. Um, simply because IPAs can be awesome. so diverse. <laughs> eight thumbs up. Yeah, eight thumbs up. <laughs> they, they can be so diverse. I mean, we, we said earlier how you can get the same recipe and just change change the hop the hop profile up or or you know just change the hop schedule a little bit and get a different beer. So I like that diversity. I like the the complexity that different types of hops and different different combination of hops can bring can bring to the table. And um, you know, I I I just like um the fact that you know these different components can give you a different aroma. It can give you a different taste. It can give you a different finish. And and I just like that th those levels 
that IPAs can give you. Yeah, I, I, I give them a, th a thumbs up as well. Um, excuse me. Going for macro beers, uh, I think one of the first IPAs I ever had was a, a regular stone IPA. And that to me, I was like, whoa, you know, now obviously it's a little different, maybe perhaps uh, my view on that, but as well as it's, it's, it, as far as like IPAs, single IPAs, double IPAs, you're, you're talking about like for a different build, malt builds, different hops, different flavors, uh, different textures in your mouth. The mouthfeel is completely different. Some of the, you know, you, you have a, a more medium, like a biscuity mouthfeel as well. And it's, it's crazy what you can do. And you're talking about, as far as like dropping in a few hops, it, it's something that physically you're not doing like much of, and it can change the beer complexity so much. Mm -hmm. Jeffrey? Yeah, just like uh, the, the bald eagle is the national bird of the United States, the, the IPA and all its variants are the national beer of the craft beer nation. So it's the most popular beer in, in the U.S., we got to represent. There's a lot of lot of diversity, a lot of complexity. Great beers, average beers, shitty beers, but yeah, we have to we have to support them. You know? I'm gonna go thumbs up all day long. I love everything about hops, and from a mm -hmm. pale ale to a dr double, triple, quad IPA, however we want to brand it. I'm a huge fan of hops, and and you know, to the people that that are drinking the macros that are like, oh yeah, Bud Light and Coors Light's where I'm at. Don't start with a double IPA. Get your palate to get yeah. to where you're ready to drink yeah. a double IPA and to be able yeah, to appreciate it. But as far as I'm concerned, as a craft beer drinker, I am a huge fan of hops, all styles of them, and I will never turn down any beer that's well produced with hops. So, yeah. IPAs are thumbs up from this guy. Well, for me, um, I'm a malt hat. I like more stouts and and, and, and porters and red aos and umber aos, but I I I, I haven't a big appreciation for IPAs and its variants and uh, double IPA is no different for me and uh, uh, I think the biggest thing to me is the, the amount of complexity that the hops can bring to a beer and I appreciate that and just the whole universe that you get and, and the horizons that open to me and I, I know I drink twice as many uh, hoppy beer than I drink it two years ago so um, I think brewers are just doing an amazing job and as long as the beer is good it's good with me and uh, yeah I'm all for hoppy beers that said um, I want to thank everybody for watching the show and um, next week we'll be back here at the same hour 10 p.m. EST <laughs> on Friday night for Craft Beer Nation and we're doing Pilsners so we're I'm doing so. a one native. Yeah, we're going to the other spectrum of beers. <laughs> oh yeah. We're doing Pilsner, <laughs> which is it's it's a style that's on my heart. I love Pilsner. So especially as the summer you know, approaches. Yes, yeah. especially. Awesome. Yeah, that's that's right, Randy. So especially because summer is uh, on the on the corner there, uh, here in Pennsylvania, maybe. Right. <laughs> <laughs> a couple months ago for us, but whatever, yeah. Right. I, I mean, on my lawn. Okay. Yeah, uh, Jeffrey. Jeffrey has been on summer like for since like late February. Yeah. Late February, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, join us next week. Uh, thanks everybody, and uh, bring your pills to it, and make sure to get your glass ups. Cheers, everybody. Yeah, peace. Have a great Cheers. Time. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.